Hello world. What separated your deep ball from everybody else? My deep ball, it has a little secret sauce to it, man. <laughs> I never get too high, never get too low, but just keep moving. The, the whole story is Carlos never beat me in any kind of sports in, in, in high school. Welcome to the Orange and New Black Good. Podcast. I'm your host, Ace Boogie, joined by my co-host, Zim. Zim, say what's up. Hello world. We got a, another amazing podcast for you guys tonight. I know it's the bye week. I know a lot of people taking breaks off, but the Orange is the New Black podcast is never taking off. And luckily for us, we have a king, the dream, Adenergy tonight. Yeah. And he's here live with us, starting right guard for the Cincinnati Bengals right now. Been a crazy season so far. We're at the halfway point. Hakeem, say hello to the people tonight and tell the people how you're feeling. What's going on with it, man? I'm just chilling, enjoying the bye week. Uh, good to be back on the field with my with my guys. Yeah, that definitely. Like me and Zem talked about it, and I felt like you were a sleeper in the off season, and I really felt like you would kind of come in and fill that void that we had at the right guard position. But obviously, you ended up having the pec injury. Can you talk to the people just what it was like to kind of battle back for that and get back to that starting position? Uh yeah, man. Like it was definitely unfortunate, you know, putting in all the work in the off season and and coming in and having it happen at the time that it did. But uh, just kind of trying to stay in, in good spirits and, and and play my role and be ready whenever the team needed me. And uh, yeah, just staying ready for real. I mean, that was it. And just 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 every single day, just taking every single day, just one one day at a time and helping out. We got three rooks in the room, just helping them out and. And, and just learning and doing the best that I could be to stay ready. So when the day came, which it came sooner than, you know, I might have thought, you know, that, that I'd be able to, you know, go out there and perform. I got a two-part question. When you when, – for someone that's never played football, when you tear your pet, do you know right away? Uh, that was my first time, and yeah, I kind of knew something. It was it was kind of funky when it happened. It was – I was like – I'm a pretty like tough dude, but like when it happened, I was like, ah, this this ain't right. You was like, let was me like, let, let me was, stop what I'm doing. I was like, that was something right there. That was this uh, different. Yeah. <laughs> what what you, know, you try to make yourself think it's not as serious as it is, but I mean, when you look back on it, like when it happens, you can tell. So then, like when that happens, though, like for I don't and not to go into heavy detail with, with the actual injury or whatever, but like when that happens, like did you stop what you were doing for the rest of the day, or were you like, let me just kind of keep on trying to just go through it? Maybe I just kind of just was, it's like stop, man. I was I was mad because I was I was like, man, just the timing of it, and I like I knew that I didn't know how severe it was, and then you know, I tried to like. Know, get back and start doing stuff and rehabbing it like like maybe it's not serious maybe I just strained something and I could get back but yeah it was uh I remember that day it was it wasn't it wasn't fun it and wasn't it, fun for Bengals fans either <laughs> we was going through it when he went down bro like right. that took the I was going through it a little bit more <laughs> I'm about to say I'm about to say I bet he was going to, but because I think coming into the season as a Bengals fan and a lot of people probably being out of every position, you know, for all the things that happened around Joe Burrow last year, all these different things moving forward, one of the biggest emphasis of the offseason was offensive line depth. And that was a huge blow. I just I think I think Ace was probably saying that just to kind of let you know, like whether you know it or not, people were really, really like counting on you like at the beginning of the season. And, and we all felt like you would be really, really important. And I think the level of importance kind of conveys over because like you said, here you are. Right away, it happened really quick. How, when did you know? Because you only had about two weeks of practice once you came back, right? Mm. So two weeks of practice, Frank comes over to you and says, hey, look, it's time to go. Yeah, man. Like, uh, we had talked about it and, you know, felt like I had a good chance to, you know, kind of be in that position early. And obviously I got hurt. And been like I said, just just coming in and working and, and keeping myself ready, and I felt like you know I was I I did what I needed to, and I showed that uh, I would be able to come in and, and, and contribute. And you know that's that's kind of the goal moving forward. Like still, still a long ways to go. Like I've still been practicing for a couple of weeks, but yeah. Nah, that's fine. So one of the things like I remember about you is when we first drafted you, 
you were like the Bengals got a steal. And a lot of people felt like that too. Like people that were in the know about, you know, you as a prospect and, and things of that nature. How did you know that the Bengals were interested in you? I didn't. <laughs> so they called me really. Uh, they were at the senior bowl, but they were the other team. Uh, Cause I was, I was, I was with the Lions coaching staff and, um, I met with the old O-line coach and our, our current assistant O-line coach when, when we had, like, switched at one point. That's the only contact that I really had with them. But you know, outside of that, I, had, I didn't really have any clue. Right. Um, I guess, <laughs> thank God you ain't got the Lions because this is pretty rough <laughs> over there this year. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little rough over yeah. there. But um, coming out, you know, like, so – one of the things that I think coming into the year for me personally, I'm like, man, he's like, like if that's your if that's your swing tackle, if that's your backup tackle, whatever. Like you in really really good shape because at any moment he could come in and tackle. I even was showing clips of different footage. I don't know if you ever saw this. I probably added you on it, but you're a busy man. But at tackle, you really really flourish. Do you think that tackle is still your best position? Um. Yeah, man, I've been I've been playing. I mean, this is my first game playing guard since. High school. Okay, so see, I don't know the back. I'm yeah. thinking like maybe you play guard in like high school or something, and then you like. Yeah, but it's not the same. High it's a little. You're in. And yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, this is like my first time like really playing guard in like a game. So uh, that's incredible. I mean, that's crazy. Let me see, but. Uh, do you understand how crazy that is, though? Like for somebody that's never played in the National Football like not National Football League, like myself, whether mm -hmm. you played the position or not, uh -huh. for you to come out of there, come off an injury, come yeah. straight into a lineup and play the way that you did this past week—that's incredible. It's definitely tough, but I mean that's that's what they pay us to do. So you know you got to show up and, and, and be ready. You got to be a professional. You got to be a professional for sure. What is the biggest difference that you feel like when you're – I know, like, when I talk to other big guys like yourself, like, inside that they say, like, it's just tighter quarters. You don't really get – you know, like, what are some of the different challenges that you're saying already, like, in that first game that you had? Like, just playing. Uh, you mean, like, going from going from tackle to guard? Yeah. It's just way different. Everything happened way quicker. It's just, it, it's like a it's, – it's really a different, like, mindset of, like, there's your responsibilities and what you have to do. Okay. Yeah. Nah, that's, that's real. Uh, so obviously you played at Kansas, right? And mm -hmm. you you played with Puka Williams. Puka's on the team now. Yeah. Talk about like just having that relationship from you guys, you know, playing with each other in college and now playing with each other for the Bengals. Yeah, Puka, that's my little bro. And, you know, I'm always always got my arm around his neck and you know helping him out whatever he needs. Since we've been at Kansas, just knowing like how special of a player he is and. Uh, just wanting him to flourish and, and be the best he can. He's, he's, he's a special talent, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that he got – I remember he first called me and he was going crazy that, that he was signing here. But, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for the moment when he's able to show, show everybody what he can do. Facts. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to say, so talk to us about, like, Kansas. What was that recruitment process like? What were you narrowed down to? What, what led you to Kansas ultimately? And then you could, and then after that two part question, what was your time like at Kansas? So uh, I originally had committed to Air Force, and I was signed. It was February signing day. Boop, boop. Uh, I find out I've told this story like at least five hundred times. But uh, I'm allergic to cashews, and uh, my medical waiver got declined to go there. I was going because my brother had gone there six years early, and I was familiar with everything didn't get recruited kind of how I wanted to. And, and that was somewhere I felt like comfortable going. But flash forward, my medical waiver get declined. So now it's like June and their whole system is different because you're going into like basic training and everybody's already in their in they camps, freshman reported. So it's June, I can't go because my medical waiver is declined. So now it's June, I ain't got nowhere to go. I'm panicking. Luckily my high school coach had gone to Kansas uh, He'd been at my high school for 20 years. He had gone to Kansas because he had a relationship with the head coach, Beatty. And um, he had gone there. He found out about the situation. We worked something out, and I was there like a week later rolling. And, uh, yeah, uh, my time at Kansas, uh, it, it was good. I obviously didn't win like I wanted to, and that was that was very difficult. And so mm -hmm. you know, coming here and starting off the season good, even though we 
had a couple rough last week. It was really important to me to, to get back on that winning track. For sure. Yeah. No, nah, that's facts. Um, your mom was a television anchor in Nigeria before um, she transitioned over to, I believe, the Texas area with the family. What was it like as far as having your mom as a television anchor? Did she kind of prep you for interviews or stuff like that? Were there any tips that she kind of gave you when it came to dealing with the media? A little bit. Not really, though. Mom, uh, I could tell she was on TV because my mom loved to talk. <laughs> I get on the phone with my mom right now. We're going to be talking for 30 minutes. I don't know about what. She's just going to keep going. But <laughs> nah, That's good yeah. stuff. Um, what I was gonna say, you, you before Ace asked you the question about, yeah. uh, you, you know that, um, you were talking about the last two weeks, um, you know, uh, being a little bit rougher in in the in the Browns game. That from the outside looking in, for the most part, like if you didn't see the game or you didn't go rewatch the game, I've rewatched this game like three, four times, right? Most people just say, man, the Bengals just got blown up. The, the crap out, right? For the first two drives of that game, I feel like were the best, arguably probably some of the best offensive sequences. Like, everything dialed up was, like, so fluid. It, it had this rhythm to it, and it was so amazing, like, in those first two, in those first two drives. Mm -hmm. Going from the Jets game to that game, because those are the two games that, you know, you've been active in and started at, right? Mm -hmm. What does it take? What is the difference? What is so different about the first two drives and arguably a lot of points in the first half of that game? You know, like, what is it going to take for the Bengals to just consistently do that? And what was the difference? You're saying those two drives compared to, like, what, the rest Com of the Compared to, like, some of the slow starts and some of the other games, some of the other games where you're just searching for – a way not to get three and out, you know, like just hitting on all of your players. Like, damn it, everything I called was a first down on those first two drives. Like, uh, like what was different about those two drives that you just remember, like being a part of the game? Like, I don't know if you remember how those yeah, two, they, they were really, really good. Uh, I don't remember. I was, I was tired in drives because it was a long drive. <laughs> that was my first night back. It's, right, right. It was different getting back in there. But, uh, yeah, man, we just, just, uh, I mean, obviously, we're still, like, a young team. And so, like, we – the the flashes have been there, and but we just got to be consistent. And I think that's just going to come with us, like, improving and gelling and getting better. Um, like I said, we, we've done a lot of good things, but we made a lot of mistakes. And I think as we mature and as we get more experience and as we are able to, like, submit and, and find out, like, these are the certain points in the game that you got to capitalize on to win – Right. I think that you know we'll get better, but I think I, I think that's definitely gonna come with time, and I think sure. we're, we're working our way there. Definitely, definitely. I'm glad you brought that up because you said like the Bengals. A lot of people don't realize that it's a a young team, like you said, with enormous amount of talent. Uh, windows where a lot of you guys are in your early 20s. Like this could be potentially you know a good team for years to come. And I think learning from those aspects, like you said, is just only gonna help this team get better. But it seems like you guys, even with the two losses, are still extremely confident. And I feel like a lot of people that know about, you know, football and just watching it know that this is still a good team. So how do you feel like you guys are getting ready to prepare to attack the second half of the season? Uh, Man, just kind of like like we met on before, like we love just take this week to flush everything out. It's a long, it's a long, it's a difficult season, you know. Get your bodies, everybody get their bodies back right. Obviously, I'm a little more fresh since I only, I only played one game. But, you know, get your body right, get your mentals right, and improve on the things that we improved on and then the things that we got to work on. Obviously, if we can, if we can, uh, you know, cut the tide on those and, and be a lot better, then, I mean, you'll see them five wins that we got. We can, in the second half, we can get considerable amount more and, and put ourselves in a position to do what we want to do. Is the message in a in a one second? I do want to just get update everybody where we're interviewing. This is the Orange is the New Black podcast. We're here with Akeem Adeniji, starting right guard for the Bengals right now. And like somebody said in the comments, please make sure y'all hit the like button. Please make sure y'all hit the subscribe button if you like these this good content and the guys that we're bringing on here, like Akeem or whatever. Make sure you hit that like button. Um, moving forward though, Akeem, like what is the message in the locker room from? 
maybe not even the coaches or the players. Are y'all saying like I made a tweet earlier today? I said, man, what how the AFC is so stacked up. Um, you cannot afford to lose uh, more than three games. Like because like just looking at the overall picture, the Bengals will have to go five and three. Anything less than that, you're probably not in the playoffs. Do the players say stuff like that, or is it like you're just getting ready for Vegas? Uh, so like uh, we kind of like see, saw like a little graphic of like our schedule coming up, and the good thing is even with them past two games, like every pretty much every team, like eighty percent of the teams that's in the playoff picture right now, we're gonna go up against in this next half. So like we pretty much control our own destiny. So I mean, at that point, it's like if we take care of business and do what we need to do. We're gonna be in the right position, and if we don't, then I mean, it it is what it is. Cause we, yeah. you know what I'm saying. So, so it's one of those, those. It's one of those things where, uh, it's really a great position to be in because uh, we take care of business like like we need to, and then we're gonna be playing great ball, and we should be able to have you know we'll have good momentum, and and we'll be right where we want to be, as opposed to like. I mean, who knows? Like maybe we win them them past two games, we coasting and 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 lose right. better. At a, you know what I'm saying? So right, like, right. Every, everything's right where we need it to be. I feel like. Right. Yeah. So one thing I wanted to ask you, Hakeem, is like with you being there, practicing with the guys day in day out, you obviously um, are aware of some of the underrated players that people may not know about on the Bengals team. Who would you say are some of like the underrated players that like the fans may not know, but you know like they real they real when it comes to playing football? Uh, I feel like it's a lot. I feel like we got some. I feel like we got some dogs. We got some young. You know what I'm saying? But who? But who in the locker room? You like, man, this dude right here. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm like I'm like that. I'm like with that. What we interviewed we we interviewed your boy Quentin Spain probably like what was that like a month ago? Ace to me, he is like the unsung hero. Like you a dog, right? 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 Like but but like who's somebody that you? I mean, of course people know Joe Burrow and you know Jamar uh-huh. Chase or whatever, right? But like who's somebody that you just think is like super slept on? That is a great super question. Super slept on. I gotta say, my I gotta throw my boy Puka in there. Yeah. Okay. When he gets on the scene, he's gonna go crazy. Uh well, all right, but all right, let's talk, let's talk Puka real quick. Say oh, you got another one. No, 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 keep, no, no I'm gonna let you think. I'm gonna let you. uh I think I was unfortunate Deontay got hurt. He was doing some good things. I feel like he gets back on the scene, he's he's gonna be good. I feel we I feel like we're deep. I feel like we gotta a lot of good young guys. Uh, my boy Joe, I wish he wouldn't have got hurt. Osai. Mm, yes, sir. Good things. Uh, yeah, man, I think we got like a, I, th- I feel like we got a lot of good young talent. Say, but this, all right, let's go to Puka real quick, right? For people outside of the NFL, I think Bengals fans are just like, he's fast, he's shifty, he, he, we see the elusiveness. We just like, let him play, right? Mm-hmm. What do you think, um, because a lot of different things happening, I think, in the world or just the NFL where somebody has to have, like, a breakthrough. Like, Lamar Jackson has to have a breakthrough at that position. Because of Puka's size Mm -hmm. and because the NFL probably isn't used to, like, they're used to guys that have, like, you know, like, I I guess, like, uh, you're going to play Austin Eckler or somebody later on. He's a little bit more – he's got a little bit more belt, you know, like, to him, but – there's there's not too many reference points in the history of the NFL that will have a guy of Puka's size. So a lot of people say he won't be able to play running back. You got to put him at wide receiver. Like, do you feel like it's it's got to be one thing or the other, or do you feel like there's something that we're missing? Um, I think I think all of those are just excuses. I mean, I feel like people uh, like in the NFL they like to have like these kind of like norms and like rules, but I mean, as you can see, like a lot of them have come down. Like people didn't think somebody like Lamar would be a quarterback, but now he, you know what I'm saying? Like I feel like you you put him out there. I've seen I've seen him play football, and I've, I've been playing football. This is my second year now in the league. Like I know what he can do. He he can do something. He he can do some damage out there. You know what I'm saying? So I I think I don't think that really matters. I mean, it's gonna factor into like what his, the opportunity he's gonna get, obviously. But I think once he gets that, I think 
it'll be right. Yeah. Gotcha. One thing that I always ask everybody, bro, is I need your top five. And since you're a lineman, I need your personal top five, like bing or not even Bengals. It can be NFL offensive linemen for just for you. My top five NFL offensive linemen? Top five. Right now? Or all time? All time. Let's go all time, and then we could do right now, too. We could do both. I can't really do right now. I feel like that's, you know what I'm saying? That's tough. Yeah. <laughs> let's do Let's do all time, then. Let's do all time. My top five NFL offensive linemen all time. I got to go Munoz for sure. I got to throw Munoz in there. Uh, hmm. I gotta throw Tyron in there. I grew up a Cowboys fan, so I mean he he the only current one that I'm gonna put in there. I gotta go Tyron. Uh big Larry Allen. Uh another cowboy. Another cowboy. I'm in D I'm 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 in a D I'm in a DC area. I absolutely hate the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> hate Cowboys. Like with a uh, passion. Uh, I I ain't mad at uh mm, I throw a right tackle. I got I'm, I'm gonna throw Big Willie in there. Big Willie was nice. Yes, sir. We yeah. gotta go. That's our boy. That's a that's a friend of the show. Nice. Um, you need to come. With, have you ever worked out with Willie before? I haven't. I haven't. Man, I will. I will. I will love something. I'm gonna talk. I'm we, me and Ace gonna talk to him. We gonna, yeah. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay. How many? How many? That's what four. That's four. Yeah, that's four. four. So you got um, one more. Man, another one. Oh, I ain't, I ain't. It's too many. It's too many. Uh, I'm gonna say Ogden. I'm gonna go with Ogden. Okay, Jonathan Ogden. That's a okay. that's a good five. That's, that's a really real good five. Crazy five. You go. You got five right there. You never lose a football game for for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like he just run for like nine yards to carry every game. Um, <laughs> he was talking about top five. Um, for I mean, uh, yeah, off as a line. Uh-huh. We want to know top five. You and Puka get in the whip. Your top five on your playlist. Top five on my playlist. Me and top. Puka get in the whip. Nah, nah, all right. Forget oh, Puka. Say, Puka nah, nah. Play something different. He gonna play. <laughs> he, he, what do you play? A bunch of New Orleans stuff or something like that. Yeah. You probably play. I went. Puka. Crazy thing is, I went to a No Limit concert the other day. Uh huh. I'm surprised Puka wasn't in the building because <laughs> <laughs> all the, the everybody was in camo. They was just like, yeah. huh? it, like it was crazy. Like I grew up on No Limit. Crazy. You're you're a lot younger than. Well, you're not that like, nah. much younger than. But but No Limit like was the I'm, even where I'm at. You get in the whip right now. Top five. You plan for us right now. Who you want here more than anybody? Top five. Uh, I gotta go. I gotta go. Cole. I gotta go. J Cole for sure. Uh, gotta go Nas for sure. That's the that's the goat to me. Okay. I'm throwing on some Nas. Um, I might throw on some Drake. Okay. Let's switch it up. Can't go wrong with Drizzy. Mm. He said he not turning on Donda. I ain't said no Donda. I made it some old yeah, but not nah, not the new yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, why you trying to call me out? Like, I'm not hitting right he now. won't, he won't, he won't dare put no certified lover boy up against no Donda. He wouldn't do uh, that. Yeah, Donda not hitting like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go some, uh, I'm gonna go some Vince Staples in there. Okay. Hey, hey, he's like hey, he like Ace, Ace like, was hating on Staples. I sent him a Staples album, the last one, like three, four months ago. He was hating yeah. on Staples. Nah, I'm tripping on that one. Nah, Staples cool. I just yeah, he just not my vibe. Bro. He was hating on Staples, and he was hating on Dom Kennedy. He was hating. Nah, on Dom on, is my guy. Rocking with the West Coast. Dom is definitely my guy. I spent some time on the West Coast. Dom, my guy. He trolling right. now. Yeah. No. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I got you confused. My bad. Ace. Nah, you good. <laughs> Somebody said you ain't. My man Diddy in the crowd said, "Man, you ain't playing no K Dot." Uh, K Dot, I ain't never. I ain't really rock with K. I, I listen okay. to K a little bit. I ain't, See, I think when once you start saying Nas, then people just automatically say lyrics because you started off with Cole too. Cole yeah, I went Nas, to, he like they got, different, they got different style. They all got like different styles though. For sure, they all got different styles. I used to be a huge Cole fan, but I don't know at what age I like. I fell off of him like yeah. maybe like four More five like years mistake, ago. Mistake Cole for me. Mistake Cole, man. Yeah. Man, I was at, 
I was mm-hmm. in North Carolina when Cole was, you know, up and yeah. coming. And at that time I was in school. I remember I went to a show. It was like me and like 80 people. Uh-huh. And I was in the front row going crazy. And I don't know, like, if it the, the last couple of years, he just kind of just kind of mellowed out to me. I almost look at Cole almost like it's like jazz music. You know, like jazz just be kind of like playing in the background or whatever. Uh-huh. Never goes real high, never goes real low. Yeah, it's just it's just like so chill that it's not really like gets a big response. Yeah, you got that 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 uh that mix tape cold that come up warm up. Yeah, that oh, come oh, up. That, you get on that, that. Yeah, that Friday night, night lights. lights. Friday night, night lights. Night. Yeah, truly all of that. Yeah, come yeah. out. So in your spare time, Hakeem, like what what do you do? Obviously, you just got married and stuff like that. Is it something? Where you, I didn't know that. Yeah, no problem. Is it something where you like, you know, you peruse YouTube? Or are you a gamer or like what did, what do you do kind of in your time to yourself? Uh I'll be chilling, man. Uh I, I love to cook. I've been cooking this by week. I just make some good old jerk chicken, you know. What I'm Ooh, Ooh, that jerk! I've been, I, I've been adding. I've been adding. I just had some brown stew yesterday. Yeah, don't play with me. Yeah, um, <laughs> oh. getting a couple of things ready. I'm about to throw down for Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Big. I love cooking. Um, I watch some anime. Uh, Which anime you watching? Because some people don't. I like. I'm a Dragon Ball fan, but some people don't consider that real anime. No, that's real. That's a real anime. Real. It's just like mainstream anime, though. Right. Like the oh, it's the OG. Right. No, I watch. Like, it, I watch whatever it is, as long as it as long as it's good to me. Action. It could be a little plot. It could be. It could be whatever. Right. You you recently been married and everything, and then the bye week comes up. Was there any thought like, hey, like let's get away for a little bit, go whatever, or you just was like, nah, we chilling? Because I'm seeing a lot of players, you know, like yeah. It, they, they getting out of town quick, you know. Like, yeah. what, you know, I'm like, like was, yeah. there, was there a conversation where you like, man, let's go somewhere? Yeah, we're gonna go somewhere for a little bit for the next couple of days. After okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get away, but get like your I mind. Go, just, just, yeah, just be chilling and doing what I do. I was looking forward to it. And got, I haven't been able to, you know, throw down like I wanted to in a minute, so that was good. That was fun. You know, yeah, getting nah. stuff off your mind, but yeah, yeah. Cooking, sure cook, the cooking wife is, appreciate that. I know, like oh, yeah. I cook myself, oh, yeah. and she, she like she probably like, got with him. She too. probably got it with him just for that. <laughs> just like yeah, I got me one. <laughs> got me one. This man out here cutting up green peppers like that. Yeah, like get jerk it. chicken. Yeah, she on that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but no, that's is uh, like for um, you know, like coming back off of the bar. Mm-hmm. You know, like I was talking about like different things that um. You know, like in my mind, it has to be five or three or better, or whatever. Like, what is one of the goals that you have coming off of the bar, going to Vegas, not shooting craps, not gambling, going out there to handle business? What is one of your main goals that you got, like, to go into that game to get this W? Like, the main goal? Uh, for you. Oh, for me? For you. I, mean, I need a ball out. And what does that entail? Like, I mean, like, oh. what? How could, like, I guess, do, is it that? Is it that uh, channel? Is it that tunnel vision? And like, if I just win my battle, then every, that's enough for us to win. Every snap. Yeah, every snap. Win every snap. There, work, yeah. work together, be on the same page. You know what I'm saying? Communicate and, and stuff like that, so we can be on the same page as a team. But like, yeah, take care of, take care of my job, and, and trust my teammates to do their job. So. I'm I'm gonna read you something real quick. I wish y'all to get this the ace real quick on it. I wish y'all to get on the screen. I just want y'all to keep this in mind when y'all play the Browns like later on in the season. Uh-huh. Defensive coordinator Joe Woods said earlier today, when things in the pass rush and coverage, he felt he could call anything versus the Bengals and it would work. I just want you to relay that message to everybody. He pretty much is calling y'all out to say. Anything that he called from a defensive coordinator standpoint in that game was working, and, and, and the Bengals put no fear in his heart as far as other. Did you did you not see that ace earlier? Nah, I think is well. I mean, I'm gonna just speak for myself because I don't know what happens, but but a king. But I, I I don't know. You know, like coming up against Vegas. You know, like that's a you know that's the focal point. But I just want you to know that that's what the Browns defensive coordinator thought of you. I mean, I mean, it is what it is. Like they, I mean, they beat us, and uh, I mean, you don't really pay no mind to that. It's football at the end of the day. Like that, all of that, 
media press talk is what it is. And like at the end of the day, like we know we know the mistakes that we made and that we could have fixed so that we could have done what we needed to do. So I mean that right. doesn't really hold too much weight, you know, to us. Okay. Yeah. I just <laughs> for me, like so yeah. you gotta understand, I get on the yeah. internet and I'm a professional. BS talker, like I, I do this all day. So when yeah. I saw that, I said, Oh, yeah. yeah, I cannot wait. You know, like, so you know, just talking directly to you, I just wanted to relay that message that that's what the Browns defensive coordinator thinks of you guys. So when that when that time comes, mm. just 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 think about that. I wonder, um, Ace, I didn't know if you had another question. Yeah, I want to ask, ask, I I ask that came a couple of to, questions from the crowd. I was gonna respond to what you said. I, I thought oh, that's, yeah. that's kind of wild because you know I got the AFC North Talk channel, so we it was a lot of Browns fans that was coming at Joe Woods as far as like his defense. So it's kind of wild that he said that. Joe felt really good. I thought like like the King was. I'm not putting words in the King's mouth, but I thought a lot of the, uh, uh, the Bengals' mistakes on that Sunday were a lot self inflicted. So I don't think it was anything. Yeah, it was just really turnovers. Good. That's not gonna happen every game though. Like that. That's not something that's common. That's gonna happen. Right. So you pretty yeah, much I, spot, you spotted them like 16, 20 points because of the. You know, you got the turnover, turnover. You on their goal line, so you taking seven away from your points. So you spotting them them points, and I just thought that was like we gonna we gonna see them at the end of the season. <laughs> we'll see what it is at the end of the season. That's you you kind of you clicked out for a second. He just said, you know, he you know, he he ain't really paying attention to that. So. Yeah, nah, it's it's on to the Las Vegas Raiders, and on to like he said, we control our own destiny. Nobody else can control that. Factual. I wanted to ask a couple of questions. If you got like a couple more minutes, Akeem, I had a couple of people that asked some questions. If you're in the chat right now, two people, make sure y'all click the like button. Subscribe to me and Ace's YouTube channel right now. Make sure you follow Akeem. Akeem, tell everybody where they can follow you at on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, underscore Hakeem78 on Instagram. <laughs> I, knew you, I, ain't, I don't be I knew you was about to do that. Like, man, yeah. what, what is it? And Why do people then, be like, man? I don't even know my name on it. I really, I really don't be, uh, don't be on social media like that. And then, uh, Keem seventy eight, the great on Twitter. Okay, yeah. Uh, Ace, did you did you have something else? Before Somebody I asked, do you like little baby? Oh yeah, I like baby. I like baby. I like baby. Willie Lutz said, "Rock chalk, Jayhawk." Rock chalk. Um. Somebody asked, Dave Lennox asked, what's your favorite, uh, your go-to cheat food? My go-to cheat food. Not your chef food. If I could eat anything, I'd probably say, I'd probably go to cheesecake. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. All right, yeah. Cheesecake. Who got the best cheesecake? What you mean, like restaurant type? Yeah. Or out here? I don't know about that. I don't know about out here. <laughs> Like, I mean, like, is it, like, see, like, my wife, she's, like, really particular with her cheesecake. She doesn't even really, she likes Cheesecake Factory, but she'll go to, like, like these fancy places I don't even know to go get, like, her go-to Ruth cheesecake. Ruth Chris got a good cheesecake. I'll tell you that. Ruth Chris was pretty Chris. good. I had that yeah. not too long ago. Okay. That was pretty good. It got to be simple, though. I don't like, I don't like when they be putting fruit and stuff on it. <laughs> I don't like that either. I just, yeah. like, straight up New York style. But, Ace, you are, you know. They they get on me on the show because I'm the weird dude. I don't eat nothing on my pizza. I don't eat none of that stuff. I don't like I, feel that. I don't like yeah. condiments like Great that. Chicken, yeah. Like if you tell me you got jerk chicken right now, right, or you got any dish right now, like I want to tell you straight up jerk chicken. I don't want to have no extra yeah. pineapples or whatever sprinkler. Like now nah, I want to yeah. taste the actual food itself. Like yeah. so, I'm like that with yeah. everything, and I'm a little extreme with it sometimes. I feel that though. Um. Uh, I just saw like a couple questions. Damn it, huh? All right, Zach, yeah. somebody, Eric Ryan said, toughest player that you had to block so far. I saw that one. I was trying to find that. Toughest player I had to block so far. This year and last year and the year before. You know what I'm saying? Not just this year. Uh, I don't know. He don't want to give him that clout. <laughs> He don't want to get, he don't want to get nobody. That's tough because he had to play some left tackle last year, so that's it. Might it might be pretty tough. Um, when we were asking about underrated, somebody said Cheetah Bay. Um, Cheetah Bay. Oh, Cheetah like that. I feel like yeah, Cheetah Bay yeah. going crazy. See, that's why it was hard for me to say underrated because I don't know who you know. 
I think right. it's not even underrated. I just feel like he, from, you know, like a fan standpoint, we knew that, you know, okay, here's a guy. And, but the expectations, I don't think were, yeah. you know, like, it, I don't think that's even underrated. And then as soon as he start balling out, it's like, I don't know, fans are weird. They just be like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. he's a, he's on an island. And they're like, nobody thought that before the season. Like, I know I surely didn't think that he was going to just come out and ball like that. Like, he's Nigerian, he, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yes, sir. Man, you gotta talk to him for it. I've been trying. I've, I've talked to him a couple of different times. I said, "Man, you need to come on here." So, Cheeto, that's my guy, bro. Before when we signed him, I was like, "Y'all gonna be sleep on Cheeto," but Cheeto man. about to turn up this year. You need to talk to him and um, tell him he need to get on here. I don't think we have any other ones that I wanted to really read on here, but I do want to just say, man, I really, really appreciate you coming on here and making this time out. I, I wish you many blessings, you and your and your new wife. Um, I'm I'm very very happy that you're on this team. I'm really really happy that you you know you came back from your injury the way that you did, and keep on doing what you've been doing because it's been working so far. So I really really appreciate you, the Hootay Nation. We 100 percent appreciate you, bro. I appreciate y'all for having me on, my man. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And before we get out, my man Diddy said he wanted to salute y'all linemen for having Joe back this past game. So appreciate that. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Appreciate that was you for, for jumping yeah. on as well, Hakeem. Um, is there anywhere that people can find you before we get get you out of here? Is that find me? Yeah. I think I already, I already put it. I put it my my handle on or the, something like that. Yeah, on the Twitter. Instagram. Okay, so yeah, check back and check the handle. Yeah. But Hakeem, we appreciate you for for joining us. Um, and this is the Orange is the New Black podcast. Zim, we're going to end this with a yes, Sersky. Hello, world. What separated your deep ball from everybody else? My deep ball, it has a little secret sauce to it, man. <laughs> I never get too high, never get too low, but just keep moving. The, the whole story is Carlos never beat me in 